Good morning, everyone. My name is Richard Evans. I'm with Caliber Yacht Sales, and today we're going to show you an adventure sailboat that can take you anywhere in the world that you want to go. Now, this boat currently has about 60,000 nautical miles on it already, and she's all ready for the next owner to take her for the rest of the way around the world. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself, so come on aboard. I'll show you what this boat is all about. So what I have here in my hand is pretty cool. It's a core sample of the deck, and that's about two and a quarter inches thick. Now the hull is the same thickness, constructed out of epoxy resin and red cedar and another layer of epoxy resin. Much, much stronger than steel, which is why this boat can go anywhere in the world reliably and safely. One of the uh, beautiful features of a solid offshore vessel is uh, a rigid dodger, a big rigid dodger over the cockpit. And look at the size of this. It's big. It's very, very big and well put together. Notice that it's not only embedded into the uh, fiberglass, but it is also mechanically fastened in just to make extra sure. So you can go anywhere in the world, regardless of what latitude that you're traveling in, even the high latitudes, you can be sure that you'll be comfortable inside that space. So notice these uh, adjustable door rads to uh, get even more ventilation down into your cabin. Uh, point them forward or point them aft, uh, depending on uh, how much air circulation that you want down there. You'll notice these solar panels. Uh, there's uh, uh, numerous solar panels, these ones here and of course on the uh, coach roof. Uh, the uh, solar panels are in place, uh, but uh, they're due to be replaced. All of your wiring is already hooked up, so just change those out and you're good to go. Uh, we have opening hatches, four opening hatches down into the salon. Um, rigid boom bang, wanted to point that out. Uh, everything is managed, by the way. Notice all of your lines go aft, uh, back to the cockpit, so very easy to single hand with the partner that's on watch. I also wanted to point out this uh, electric halyard winch here. Uh, so that just makes raising the sail so much easier. And notice these robust bat cars. Uh, this, is, uh, this is awesome. It makes dropping the sail a breeze or raising the sail. Notice that every one of the lines has its own clutch, which is uh, really, really the way it should be. And of course, when you're dropping, they drop right into these lazy jacks here. Now the sail, the mainsail is uh, currently removed. The sail has probably got another 20,000 nautical miles left on her. So at some point she is going to need to be replaced. All of the other sails all been restitched and good for another circumnavigation. So uh, forward here, now all the sails, as you can see, have been removed, but you can see that we have roller furling for the headsail here. The other thing that I wanted to point out here on the uh, bowsprit, it's been modified to handle a code zero uh, sail. Now the uh, a windlass is right here. The anchor is 52 kilograms and 250 feet of galvanized 3H chain. So very substantial, uh, more than enough for this boat. Just aft of that, uh, we've got your dinghy and notice the, it's cutter rig for offshore operation. We have a spinnaker pole right here and running backstays right there. So there you go. You got uh, a wide range of sail plans that you can use on this, this wonderful sailboat. So here in the cockpit, notice this, uh, this very, very big stainless steel wheel that's uh, wrapped in leather just to make it comfortable when you're underway. And it has a nice feel, nice feel under your hand. Uh, here we have uh, winches that are seriously oversized for this boat. We have a 58 forward and a 54 aft. Um, Lumars, which are, which are good winches. Uh, down below here we have not one but two manual gulpers uh, in the event that you have to um, manually operate uh, bilge pumps. Of course there's bilge pumps down below, uh, automatic ones. Uh, your throttle controls and gear shift right here. Um, and over here is the bracket that holds your GPS chart plotter. So back here, we uh, right below my feet, right here, is a watertight bulkhead. 
Now you might ask why a watertight bulkhead aft? The boat was designed and built for traveling anywhere in the world, including high latitudes. Uh, there are drifting icebergs that can drift with the wind and impact the boat, and you're protected if the boat should come in contact with an iceberg here. I thought that was pretty clever. The uh, adjustable backstay right here, a manual adjustment right there, uh, right over here uh, is your hydraulic tensioner, perfect for tuning your uh, mainsail uh, by bending your mast. The, uh, and getting the, uh, the exact right shape on the, uh, on the mainsail that you're looking for. What we have right here is your radar mast. That's the best spot for it, not on the mainsail, which uh, it interferes with tacking, but having it back here high enough so it's above everybody's head um, and uh, out of the way. Radar reflector, uh, your VHF antenna, and uh, notice that antenna up there with the four little prongs on it. Now that's designed to pick up Wi-Fi and use Wi-Fi from anywhere up to a mile away. Over here, um, as you heard, is the uh, wind machine generating power into the house batteries of the boat. But it also serves as a bracket to hold your stern anchor. Just below that, we've got uh, your life ring and your boarding ladder right off the stern here. Now these two drums that you have here, uh, we have one uh, both uh, port and starboard. Uh, what these do in a very serious uh, weather conditions where you want to deploy drogues, very small parachutes that extend the full length of the line, much more effective and easier to handle than a big parachute type of drogue. Notice the opening hatches that go down below. I mean, these are well positioned, so even if, uh, even if it's storming out here, uh, those hatches are well protected, so you're not going to get any seawater falling down into your galley. I like these little storage units that we have here. Um, they're tucked uh, well into the gunnel, uh, nicely out of the way, and this is a great opportunity to show you just, just how well built. Just look at the thickness of, of this fiberglass. Now it's truly an offshore boat. Notice how deep this dodger goes and uh, notice the well here. If you were to take uh, water into the cockpit and it would happen offshore, you have a deep well. What is that? Almost eight to well, probably ten inches to contain the water here and two very, very big scuppers to uh, disperse the water back into the ocean where it belongs, not in your cockpit. So that's about it for this space, but come on down below. This is, this is beautiful, but wait till you get down there. You're gonna be excited to see this. Well, just look at this awesome space, will you? This quality finishing on the woodwork and uh, all of this natural light pouring in here. Um, I'm looking at, uh, what, eight port lights here, four hatches in this space. It's just, it, you know, it's so warm and comfortable and uh, it feels good. It's, it's pretty clear that uh, with the sellers uh, traveling 60,000 nautical miles in this boat that they would do it very comfortably. But further to that, have a look at the, uh, the sitting area here. And here this end table, so perfectly located. Uh, well, actually it's an end table and bar. And uh, he, keeps, uh, he keeps his uh, liquor stock uh, down below here and his glasses. Um, the boat is very, very well appointed. Um, bookcase uh, right in behind uh, the sitting area here. It's a good pay place for it. You can sit here and for hours, I'm sure, and just uh, read books and just uh, enjoy enjoy this space. So over here on the uh, port side, very very comfortable settee with this modified uh, table. This is a, a tabletop that attaches directly to the original table just to give them a bigger space. And yet it's uh, not so big that it's going to be uncomfortable getting in there. Uh, room for easily four, uh, four people very comfortably and another two couple in these uh, swivel chairs over here. Lots of storage below, storage cabinets in behind. And this boat was built in 2000 and has traveled 60,000 nautical miles. And look at the condition of it. This has got to talk a little bit to the testament of the quality of the build of this vessel. And the headliner, look at this. It's so beautiful. I love this wainscoting and it just contributes to the overall feel that you have in here. 
I like this. Um, these, uh, each of the hatches have bars in there. Uh, and these bars have locks on them so that when you're in port and you go ashore, people can't find their way down through the hatch into your boat. The design of this boat is so that you can take all the locks off and just pull the bars out and stow them away. Brilliant. Uh, teak and holly flooring, just beautiful. Uh, very, very solid under my feet. I feel secure. And uh, you know what? Their taste and decor is, is quite amazing as well. I love the way this boat presents itself. It's comfortable and it's warm and it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, even after all of the traveling that is done over the years. So back in here, we have uh, the master cabin. And uh, just to the port side here, uh, we've got a very, very comfortable double bed. Um, but it's so well appointed in here. And again, this beautiful, wonderful cabinetry. So gorgeous. The uh, port lights are opening port lights, uh, one on each side, so you get a wonderful cross draft here. But not only the lower ones, but the upper ones as well, as well as the hatch. Lots of ventilation in here, just a wonderful space. Look at all the drawers down underneath this bed. I mean, there's six drawers, six big drawers, and um, enough to store everything that you need for long distance cruising. But if that's not enough, over here on the starboard side, we've got more drawers and more cupboards down below. I really like the way they've laid this out. Um, they've got uh, cabinets on both sides of the sink, and um, they have the uh, uh, a countertop right here as well, right in front of your port light. So when you get up and you wash your face in the morning, you're looking right out at the water and the beautiful vistas around you. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that beautiful? forward here we have a completely separate standalone shower in here with a teak grate um, and a shower sump as well and it's a beautiful feeling in here this is all like marble finish beautiful feeling in here I really like it I noticed one of the uh, radiators that they have here this has a, a Wabasto uh, hydronic heating system they have this um, passive radiator that actually has hot glycol from the furnace being pumped through it. Just beautiful boat. So here in the galley, we have another one of these great radiators. And you know what? <laughs> we've sold a lot of boats, but we've never seen a hydronic system that's a, a passive configuration like this. It's quiet. It generates a lot of beautiful heat, dry heat. And um, this, this particular one, you could uh, put uh, mitts or socks or whatever that you wanted to dry on, onto that as well. It's a very comfortable heat. It generates the heat once it's heated up, and then it maintains that very comfortably without even knowing that the heater is on. Here in the galley, I love this galley space. It's, uh, as you can see, plenty of workspace. Look at all this space here. Um, love these uh, very, very deep uh, double stainless steel sinks. Uh, one to wash, one to rinse. Here in the galley, um, it's uh, perfectly located right at the bottom of the companionway. So you can hand food up to the cockpit or hand it over here to people in the city. Um, great, great, uh, great layout. Beautiful uh, four burner propane stove with a propane oven. It's very uncommon for European boats to have such uh, large stoves, but so it's nice to see that in this boat. Ideal for uh, gourmet cooking when you're offshore. And look at this, eh? Isn't this beautiful? Look how they've organized all of their dishes and all of their cups into this uh, space here. So convenient, so handy. Look at those, look at, look at how those separators are just perfectly set up and customized to hold your dishes just exactly the way you want them. So when you're offshore, you're gonna need food. Lots of food. Yeah, you can catch some fish, but there's, uh, you could go three or four weeks with, uh, without uh, uh, seeing land. And so you're gonna need all that food with you. And part of that means that you need freezers. So, we have a freezer right here. It's a chest freezer, uh, very well insulated, and it goes down quite a ways, uh, probably about uh, 18, 20 inches, and um, designed, to, um, designed to keep the cold in because it is a chest freezer. But wait, <laughs> there's another freezer. 
there's a freezer here as well. And again, very well insulated. Um, just look at that insulation. So that means that you're not going to be burning very valuable power when you're offshore. Now, if that's not enough, down below here we have another fridge freezer and, of course, with uh, a latch to keep it in place. So the refrigeration system on this boat is very unique. In fact, I've never seen it before on any other boat, and it's brilliant. At least I think it's brilliant. The uh, name of the system is uh, Frigiboat, and it's an Italian system that actually cools down the compressors using cold water. Yes, it goes through the hull and small trombone in there that uh, cools down the refrigerant at the proper temperature. Now the interesting thing is, is that device saves about 200 amps per day. That's quite a lot uh, when you're uh, looking to conserve power. And that's not only for the two freezers, but it's also for the fridge freezer as well. A br brilliant, brilliant concept. I really like it. And when you're cooking, you want lots of fresh air coming into the space, and uh, here we have it. We've got uh, an opening hatch right here, opening port light here, and an opening port light here, the next one here for obvious reasons, and then of course all the fresh air that you get from coming down through the companionway. So it's a very, very comfortable working space, as you can see. Lots of workspace, deep sinks, loads of uh, freezer and refrigerator space and loads of storage in a whole bank of drawers, pots and pans drawers down below and cleaning supplies underneath the sink. This is really a two-person boat with the occasional guests and for those occasional guests here we have uh, their stateroom right here uh, with their own private sink, uh, very comfortable space, again that beautiful finish. Um, opening port light uh, and enabling uh, natural light and fresh air to come in. And down below there's lots of storage and, uh, and a drawer there as well. Um, over here we have this great nav station. And again I just want to comment on the, uh, the beauty and comfort of this luxurious finish here. Uh, all of your navigation equipment is here. You uh, have your uh, cable connections uh, for your uh, notebook if uh, you are running Noble Tech um, and uh, your depth sounders are here, GPS chart plotters are here, uh, your uh, SSB and VHF, all of your AC and DC switches and uh, your radio telephone here. It's, it's all here. And they did it with uh, all of the electronics and whatnot that they have here to master this vessel. Um, ready to go for her next 60,000 miles. So this is the utility room and uh, start of this is the uh, lazarette that is accessible only from inside, not from outside, for that extra level of security and uh, uh, just strength in the build of the boat. But um, let's start right here. Uh, first of all, you can see we've got a combination washer dryer. Um, they had space for a microwave, so they put the microwave in here. Uh, it's a marine toilet, an offshore marine toilet. It's not electric. Uh, it's a manual marine pump, but uh, that's what you want. The simpler, the better when you're going offshore. Um, of course, it has a holding tank and um, an easy access valve to switch from the holding tank to, um, to pumping out uh, overboard when you're offshore. Uh, you've got a sink right here to wash your hands and storage for cleaning supplies and soap and that sort of thing down below. Now, forward here is uh, the lazarette that we talked about. And um, in there is a whole bunch of things, uh, including two Brompton foldable bicycles for, uh, for yachts such as this. Now, these Brompton, are you ready for this? These Brompton foldable bikes are priced at 6 thousand dollars each and they go with the boat. Uh, there's special racks in there uh, that you will see in pictures. Um, hard to believe that they open up into full bicycles. Uh, vacuum cleaners up there, uh, all of your system manuals are there uh, and then access to your engine space is there as well. Brilliant design and of course you have a privacy door close it off from your utility room from the rest of the salon. 
Now this is a great layout, again very very unique, unique to this uh, this builder of Andestat. He really know, knew what he was doing for uh, designing and building long distance uh, sailing craft. Just beautiful, just beautiful boat. So didn't I tell you folks, what an awesome boat that this is. Very, very comfortable, capable of taking you anywhere in the world that you want to go safely and soundly. She's done 60,000 miles already. She's ready to do the next 60,000. All you have to do is give us a call. You'll be glad you did.